I do appreciate it when you share your time with me. Thank you very much. I'll try not to waste your time. I'm John Zadar. This is October 19th, and you are watching On Top and Hot, where we like to look at OTC and penny stocks that have potential. Every single day, there are stocks out there running, regardless of what state the market's in. But a lot of the times, the stock has its run, and then it's done. And occasionally we get stuck in those plays. We get stuck holding a bag. We didn't get out quick enough, something happened, whatever the case may be. At that point, you hope the company has value. If you get stuck in a company, you at least hope it has a good innovative product or they're making really strong revenues so that they can come back up. So we're gonna be looking at stocks today that have what I consider value, not just on the books, but in the investor's eyes. Now, when I say penny stocks, we are looking at any stock under five bucks. So we might be looking at stocks on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, but I guarantee you, we're going to be looking at stocks on the OTC. Matter of fact, all that news right there comes from the OTC market. Eh, that's about a week's worth of news. The oldest is up at the top and the newest is down at the bottom. And folks, there's some really good news in there. I'm not just saying that. There's a lot of mergers, just been a ton of them. Uh, there's a lot of joint ventures, new distribution deals. I know I say that every day, but there's a ton of them in there right now. So if you got to pause this to see that information clearly, then do it. Absolutely. I put that together for you. I've already read it. It's your turn. Go ahead. I'll wait. Let's not do that. All right. We are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site when I do my research on an OTC stock because it's never outdated for the most part. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it is updated every single day by Fiener and the SEC. And I haven't found another site online for OTC stocks that that occurs on. So why waste your blooming time running around the internet looking for a current piece of information when that is what this site provides all the time. Start your research here, folks. I say it every day because, hey, we do a lot of research and time is limited. So don't waste your time. Start here. If you can't find what you're looking for, then run off to Google and start your search. I love this site. All right, enough of all that. Let's see how the OTC market fared today. Going to go ahead and refresh these numbers. Praying for a bump. We did get a little bump. I'm not going to say anything good about it. It's a down day. Our dollar volume is down to 1.3. Old average used to be 2.1. So wherever it is, 1.9, 1.7, we're way below it right now. Share volume down. 10 billion is what we're hoping for every day. And I think we were at 8 billion the other day. Now we're down at seven. Not good, obviously. And trades, what do you hear me saying every show? Between 250 and 300,000. We're right there on the floor, scraping our heels. So it was a slow day on the market today, but there was a lot of companies that had a lot of trades. You know me, I like to follow those trades. So let me show you some interesting stocks I found today that got value. Who let the dogs in? Mm, mm. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I can't control everything, right? <laughs> All right. First stock we're taking a look at here. I'm sure you're familiar with this is Latham Airlines Group, ticker LTMA. Q. The Q is temporary, though it has been there a very long time. It represents the fact that they are in the midst of a bankruptcy. Now, they went bankrupt a long time ago. It was like uh, May of 2020, and the charts will verify that. You can see a huge spike in volume and a huge drop in price. And it was just here recently that the courts finally gave them permission to restructure. And today, they had some information came out, which you might want to call the last piece of the puzzle. And I think everything is going back to the way it was. It's just taking time to grow now, but it looks really good. And I think you should be looking at this stock because right now it's at a great price. She finished the day just under 33 cents with just about 18% gains. The company is still on the OTC, pink current tier. They used to be on the NASDAQ before the bankruptcy. And I assure you, after the bankruptcy, they will get back to the NASDAQ. Now, you know what the company does? Right, they fly planes. Good guess. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, considering that there was no news press or filings, just a wee article floating around out there, not bad. 1.5 million jumped to 10.5 million. Share structure, 
Ah, yes, I did my homework here. Before I got here, I went out and looked up the float, and I was pleasingly impressed. Our outstanding share count is over a half a billion, 606 million. Our float is under 100 million, roughly 70 million shares. That's an excellent float, but more importantly, all the shares left over between the two numbers, those are insider shares. So this bankruptcy company has a lot of shares being held by the insiders, which is always a good sign to see. Financials. Well, the company's in bankruptcy, but they're not broke. No. Last year, they did $4.8 billion. We know it's billions because you still got to add three more zeros to any of the numbers down there. So that's $4.8 billion. But as you can see, they were running at a loss. The years before, they were doing more revenues, but they were keeping some of the money. So something did go awry here. Everything is looking like it's turning around right now, especially with the news I'm going to share with you here in just a second. Disclosures. Well, they do have a bunch of disclosures, as you can see here, bunches of them, and most of them are about how they're repairing, how they're restructuring this company, but nothing that would really cause the stock to run. What did cause the stock to run was news, but as I said, the news isn't over here. That news came out September 9th, and that's all that's available here. So I went running around the internet, and I found this. Latham Airlines says it will exit bankruptcy on November 3rd. Don't you think that's worth a news press? Don't you think that's an 8K material change right there? <laughs> or is it just rumor? This came out October 15th. My bad, folks. I thought it came out today. But I can't find anything else. And that is still relevant information. November 3rd is right around the corner. Latam Airlines, the biggest carrier in Latin America, said it plans to conclude its exit from bankruptcy on November 3rd. This process will allow the group to emerge more agile with approximately $10.3 billion in equity and close to $6.9 billion in debt. They're ahead of the game there. And then down here they tell us the reorganization plan would inject about $8 billion into the airline through a combination of capital increase issuance of convertible bonds and new debt. However it plays out, the company's bigger now in their equity. They're coming out of bankruptcy on November 3rd, and they've got $8 billion being injected into them. Uh, you think this company's on the runway just to sit there and waste time? I think they're ready to take off, folks, and I think now's the time to look at the company. So now's the time to go look at the chart. Come on. So we're gonna be doing our charting on my free trading platform that I got from TD Ameritrade when I signed up for their free trading account. This is Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim, these are my viewers. All right, we are taking a look at LTMAQ. This is a three year, one week view so that we can see the bankruptcy period here. This high bubble before any bad news came out was back in December of 2019 almost $12. And we got a low bubble here not too long ago of seven and a half cents a share. Now I think it's actually lower than that. I think yesterday or today it hit uh, 6.8 cents. So it's actually lower than that. Now all that volume, I do believe that is when the official announcement came out of the bankruptcy. But I get the impression it leaked out before the official announcement because there was hardly anything left to throw away when the official announcement came out. And she has been sitting down there a very long time waiting. She was actually waiting for permission from the courts to restructure. And I do believe that was right there and we looked at it on that day. She had a 100% jump and then it came back down. And the worst part about it is, is that she has fallen even lower after the good news. I really don't get that. And then today's news. Today's news is great news. It's the best news. She's coming out of bankruptcy. She's had an $8 billion infusion of capital. Her assets are greater than her liabilities by billions. You know, folks, this company wasn't going anywhere. I knew it wasn't because it had branding. It generates a lot of revenues. What did they do in a bad year? $4.8 billion. So, Who's gonna let that die? No, they're gonna bring it back one way or another, they'll work their magic. And soon enough, it's gonna be back on the NASDAQ as well. And to be on the NASDAQ, you gotta be at least $3 and we're at 32 cents. So you're looking at a thousand percent gains just to get back on the NASDAQ, however they work it. Hopefully it isn't through a reverse split. 
If they did do a reverse split, whoo, that would make for a really low float then. Technicals, wow, they're screaming, folks. Look at this. Every single one of them is pushing to the moon. My PPO, percentage price oscillator, which is a cousin to the MACD, it's doing the same thing, pushing to the moon. Uh, the difference between the two, MACD works with the full price. PPO works with the percentage of the price. Uh, this is my ADX. This shows me continuation of trend. As long as the direction of that line doesn't change, whatever direction the trend is on the charts isn't going to change either. Well, it's going up and that hasn't changed. So everything looks hot. Only thing we had to pull back on was the RSI and it's still on fire. I wouldn't touch it yet. It's still really, really hot. And look at that folks. Volume is real strong right now, but that ain't nothing. With everything I just said, this company is going to start getting volume. The price is going to start going up. Why shouldn't it, right? Let's take a look at the 20-day, one-hour view. Gee whiz, with that good news coming out that they had permission to restructure, there was just nothing going on. And then it started pushing up. And the funny thing is, the 15th is right here. Now, I don't know when any other information came out. That's the only piece of news I found that said November 3rd, they were gonna be out of bankruptcy. But I see the price was rising here on the 12th and the 13th and the 14th. So three days before the news that we looked at, the 15th came out, it was already pushing up. But Monday, obviously the news had gotten around a little bit. We got some momentum pushing up, although we are over the 200 as well. That always helps. And today she ripped it up to 55 cents. Come on, folks. She was down here at just under 7 cents to 55. You're looking at uh, at least 700% gain, 750. And then she came down. Of course, she's got to take a breath. Everybody's got to sit down and take a breath. And that's looking like what she's doing right now. Technical show, she had a lot of strength and she is pulling back. But look at that volume increase. And I expect it to just keep getting stronger. Five day, five minute. All right, she shows she has come off the floor. She's come above her 200. She's pushing away from it. Folks, you know, it's not about what the chart shows right now. It's about what we know. The company's coming out of bankruptcy. They got money. They got more assets than liabilities. They're a name brand. I just read the other day that they're up to 80%, I think it was, of their flights that they have booked right now. Things are getting better and better and better, and I expect them to get better and better and better. So their high was $12.00 a few years ago. I don't know what it's going to be worth now, but I know it's not worth 32 cents anymore. It's worth a lot more. The potential gains sitting on the table are big, folks. So we're not looking at a day trade here. Give this some time. Be patient with it. But don't just stare at it right now. This is a good price for an entry. This is a very good price. I think it's going to keep on climbing here. Is it going to have bounces? Well, of course it's going to. It's on the stock market. But now there's going to be excitement built up around it. But of course, do your own DD and verify that for yourself. All right, all right. taking a look at another company that I see value in. Well, somebody sees value in. This is Novinix Limited, ticker NVNXF. They're an Australian company with operations in Canada and the United States. Now, they had news come out today. They were recognized by the Department of Energy for what they do, and they got a $150 million grant today. So when someone else recognizes your value, that is a good assurance to us that the company has it. So they finished the day at $1.70 with almost 30% gains. And look at that. It is on the best tier of the OTC, the top tier, the QX. I don't think we've ever looked at a stock on the QX. We've looked at NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange, but never the QX. The QX is very special. We normally look at the pinks, those in the basement. And we look at the middle tier, the QB, where you have to have your financials audited. But up here at the QX, they literally give you every piece of information that they got about the company. They are as transparent as you can possibly be. So it is the best tier to be on. And look at that. Even the OTC market thinks something special about this company. They have made this one of the top 50 OTC QX stocks. Now, I don't know how many stocks are on the QX, but I know the big boys are up there. I mean, there's some serious competition up there. So I'm not quite sure how they qualified and got that position, but they have got it. 
They've got a verified profile here. And, oh, look, we got a bonus, folks. They're penny stock exempt. What that means is they're not a startup company anymore. They're not risky. They've proven to everybody that they're reliable. And how do you do that? You've got to be in business at least three to five years, clean record, filings all caught up, and have millions in assets during that time period. Once you do that, you've taken away the risk factor. And ta-da, you no longer have to jump through hoops like penny stocks have to. So they are now penny stock exempt. So what does this company do? Well, I'm going to bypass their description here and jump into one in a news press. I think it's a little better. Navinix is a leading battery technology company with operations in Canada and the United States. Navinix provides advanced high-performance materials, equipment, and services for the global lithium-ion battery industry with sales in 14 countries. So they've got operations in Canada and the United States, but they're doing business in 14 different countries. So what was the relative volume around this? free money not as impressive as i was thinking whoa wow that's really down there isn't it she normally does 142,000 thousand shares a day she didn't even break a million today wow 838,000 shares i don't know if i'm surprised or disappointed <laughs> share structure what do we got over here all right did i look these up i did look these up had to think about that for a moment outstanding share count just under a half a billion at 485 million uh i couldn't actually find numbers to agree uh the two numbers i kept seeing over and over were 285 million and 385 million so it's one of those two so it's pretty high it's pretty high financials for this company are they making any money? Well, I guess we're not going to know. This is a foreign company. So that doesn't mean that they're not filing. It means that their files are over in Australia rather than here. But we may be able to get a peekaboo. Can't guarantee it. All right. We do have a... All right. I am going to jump into this annual report here that just came out in June. But I see that they just put in an annual report for 2018. Well... I wonder why they had to do that. That's a little strange. I see it's already back here and they redid it again. Interesting. All right, I'm going to jump into this just to see if we can get an idea. I don't want to hang around here too long. Just want to get an idea of uh, what sort of money they got. Net assets as of June 30th, 2022 was 364 million for assets. Uh, compared to last year, it was 184. So they had almost 200 million increase in assets. That's good. Cash and cash equivalents at the end of June of this year, 207 compared to 136 million last year. So they are looking good. I don't know exactly how much they're making. We could probably get deep down into it, but I'm not going to go that far. And the news. So they did have news come out today. Novinix selected for $150 million grant from the U.S. Department of Energy. Novinix Limited, a leading battery materials and technology company, today announced that its Novinix Annoyed Materials Division was selected to enter negotiations to receive $150 million in grant funding from the U.S. Department of Energy to expand its domestic production of high-performance synthetic graphite annoyed materials. Now, I did read more of this. I'm not going to go through it with you, but it, they made it sound like negotiations, like it wasn't really there. No, it's theirs. This money is theirs. This negotiation on how they're going to use that money and of course this is just a u.s facility they have another facility in canada that don't get any of this money because this is the first set of projects funded by president biden's bipartisan infrastructure law to expand domestic manufacturing of batteries for electric vehicles and the electric grid so not only does the u.s see value in this company by giving them a grant but we also have the otc market seeing value in this company let's go see if that chart looks valuable now i actually i find the charts to be most valuable it's the most intricate part of my dd the news is relevant but it does not take precedent i have seen many good news pieces and the stocks still fall i've seen bad news and the stock run so which should i be paying attention to the charts absolutely so we are looking at ticker nvn xf this is a six month four hour chart and all the way up against the wall six months ago is our high of five dollars and 68 cents 
and maybe two weeks ago we hit a low of a dollar six and right now we're at a dollar seventy she has been under the 200 falling all of this time she's only hit the 200 twice a long time ago and today the volume has been considerably steady all this time and we did have a good poke on it today and along with that poke came a poke on the technicals everything got pushed up and looks strong right now though we do see there is a pullback on the RSI Looking at our 20 day one hour, nothing going on here except for the last three days. She got up on top of the 50 here. You can see she was just sitting there getting her footing. Once she had her footing, she jumped and pounced like a cat right up on top of the 200. Again, you can see she's climbing up here, sitting there getting her footing and then boom, put on her Superman cape and flew. Hit $2.12 starting down here at a dollar eight a dollar ten almost a hundred percent gains right there in the last three days we did have a pullback off of that high bubble but look at all of that volume today technicals are strong but they are showing that pullback of course let's take a look at our five day five minute oh that's a beauty I'm gonna grab my Fibonacci here folks I like to normally draw a line at the bottom where the surge begins and a line at the top where the surge ends and then just find the middle and I draw a line. Well, the tool for that is called the Fibonacci. So you poke it where the surge or drop, it could be a drop as well, where it starts and where it ends. The high bubble is where it ends. Now what I have here are algorithmic supports and resistances, all based on this information. So I don't have to go back and look for prices and make them know it's already done them for me. And they're normally pretty accurate. They're not on the money, but they're close enough to work with, absolutely. So when I see a surge, what I'm looking for is I wanna see the price stay above the 50% mark, half of it. I want you to keep at least half. 51% is better than 49. And if you hit 49%, there's a chance you're going to dribble down. So we want to see it stay above. Looks like, let's see where we're at here. Oh my goodness, she is right on top of it, isn't she? She surged up, came down, and is banging, banging, banging across that 50%. This is like uh, maybe a 7 out of 10 that she's not going to fall anymore and probably going to start to grow. If she got underneath it, now I just don't mean underneath it. If she's still hugging it, you know, hanging on to that 50% from underneath, that's okay. But if she falls down to the next line down here, Come on, it's, it's probably gonna dribble further and further down. So this looks good actually. She took a good run here. It was a powerful run, boy oh boy. Sat up there for a while and then came back down right to the 50% mark, which is where I expect a big surge to fall back to. I hope it stays up higher, but I expect it to fall back to 50%. So that's doing exactly what I expect. Now what do our technicals say? Well, honestly, these two are coming together. When I see my PPO coming down and the red ADX is coming up, the price is falling. It shows it is falling on the five minute. Let's see if it looks like that on the hourly. Yeah, we got some decisive action going here. If the blue line and red line are going apart, the price is rising. There's no if, ands, or buts. It's not kinda, no, it's rising. If they're going apart, it is rising. This is still going parallel right now, and that's starting to go down. So there is a chance it could bounce. It's on the right plateau. I would keep my eye on NVNXF. She could get some more run out of this. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of appreciation. They are, you know, looking valuable in a lot of other people's eyes, and they look to have some strong financial backings. Some more DD wasn't hurt on this stock either. This next company we're taking a look at has a twist to the tail, I'm going to tell you today. <laughs> Boy, that was tough to say. This is TPTW, also known as TPT Global Tech. Now, they had great news come out today. They're involved in a merger, but I can't help but think that it's a case of misplaced value. And I'll explain what I mean when I get there. So TPTW finished today at 0 0.0035 with 75% gains on the pink tier and current. Got those ever precious green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. And they've got independent directors. You need these if you're going to uplist. And if you're not, well, you really don't. So maybe they got aspirations to uplist. Who knows? So what does TPTW do? 
They do a lot. They're involved with telecommunications, medical technology, product distribution. They also offer software as a service, technology platforms as a service, cloud-based unified communication as a service, but they also deal with products. They are a master distributor for prepaid cell phone services, mobile phones, cell phone accessories, stuff like that. So what was the relative volume around this company's merger news? About two and a half times. She went from 10.2 million to over 27 million. Share structure, looking for a low float. We're not gonna find it here, oh my God. No, we got almost a billion shares in the float. If it makes you feel any better, it's closer to 900 million. Is this little pink making any money? Well, by golly, by gosh, they are, look at that. Over $10 million at the end of last year and they got to keep 2.2 million of it. So they're actually making a profit. Are they still making a profit now? Yep, they're doing about 2 million each quarter and keeping over a half a million. So yeah, they're doing pretty well. Disclosures, well, we know their financials are current because they're current. And down here, I love 8Ks, but these are a little old, the end of September. 8Ks are short, brief, go right to the point, and they're juicy. Lots of good information in there. All right, let's come on over here to the news because I know that is where the catalyst is at. News came out today, and we're just going to jump right on into this. Now, this is what the news tells us. TPT Global Tech with the ticker TPTW announced today that its subsidiary with the ticker INOQ has completed acquisition of information security and training, also known as IST. They are a general construction and information technology service company with approximately 5.4 million in backlog revenue as of December 31st. So they do provide design building, construction, demolition, abatement, earthwork, concrete, steel, and metalwork, masonry, real construction. Yeah, the real thing. But they also work with information technologies such as system engineering, software development, network engineering. You get the drift. They go on to tell us here that the acquisition includes the assumption of all the assets, which is 1.3 million, and certain liabilities that add up to 1.2 million. So they got a smidge more in assets than they do in liabilities. And this new addition to the company is pulling in 2.8 million annually right now. Now, as I pointed out, it isn't this company that is going through the acquisition. Now, yes, it is their subsidiary, so they're gonna get something out of it. But the fact of the matter is, it's that ticker, INOQ, that is actually doing the acquisition. And this company got 75% gains. So what did INOQ get? Look at that, almost 100% drop today. Whoa, it's a shell company not making any money. The acquisition they just made is already doing 2.4 million a year. It's not a lot of money, but it's a hell of a lot more than zero. So I don't know why this company fell, but it's down 100% at 008. And the other company went up 75%. This may be a buying opportunity, folks. I'm not quite sure what to think here. Which stock should we even look at on the chart? Well, maybe we can look at both. We'll give that a try. I wasn't planning on it, but let's see what happens. All right, I got both charts up for us. INOQ right here and TPTW over here. Now, the story just keeps getting weirder, folks. I discovered looking at the chart that this stock, INOQ, has not been selling since August 23rd. It's on the pink limited tier. They are late filing, but they're not on the expert market. So I'm not sure why they're not trading unless the company has to ask for it not to trade. Another fact that I didn't share with you, the float on this company, INOQ right now, is just over 100,000 under a half a million, under a quarter million, just over a hundred thousand shares. So maybe something is going on with share structure change right now. I didn't see a D behind the ticker, which means there's some sort of temporary change going on, but she has not been trading. And in saying that, she just made this deal, right? It's her that acquired this company that makes 2.5 million. It's her that's the shell company. And it's her down here at 008 
back in August before this deal was made. So when this comes back on the market, there's a very strong likelihood it's going to catch up to the news and the price is going to bounce. And I have no idea where it's going to bounce to, but I would put INOQ on your watch list. So when it does come active on the charts, you're going to see it immediately and not miss the initial boing. All right, let's take a look at the one stock that did get all the love today. Since this one wasn't there to give it, they gave it to the parent. This is TPTW six month, four hour chart. She had a high back here about five months ago of about a penny and a half. And not too long ago, she had a low of double zero one. After a huge fall, the fall put her right down there. Had a big blast of volume come in here, pushed her back up and she's pretty much just been going sideways since then until today. Today we had a nice launch. All of our technicals have launched, are all pushing up and all sitting pretty right now. Let's look at our 20 day one hour view. Well, she was going sideways. I could see she was trying to push up. We got our 200 day SMA came into the picture. She was tapping it, you know, she really didn't have any gumption to go anywhere until today, until that news came out. She jumped at the bell, not real fast. She was just moving through the day, hit her high here at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. Nice run. Pulled back slowly. You had some time to get out of this before she came down. And is she at her 50% mark? Let's grab our Fibonacci and see. We're going to poke the... Now, I'm just going to poke the big surge for today. From the bottom. No, we don't want that. <laughs> From the bottom to the top. All right. So our 50% mark is right there in the center. If you can't see it, I'm going to put a white line on it. Bink. Right there. Look where she's sitting pretty. All right, so I'm gonna take this off, get rid of that one, uh, remove drawing. There you go. So there's our 50% mark. She went up, came down, and is sitting right on it beautifully like a bird on a perch, right? All of our SMAs are unwinding nicely, separating beautifully, our nine day, 20 day, 50 day, 200 hull, and 200 SMA exactly the way we want them. It looks nice. Technicals have been showing strength, but there is that pullback right now sitting on a strong support. This is an algorithmic support. We don't have anything back here we drew it off of. This came off of that Fibonacci tool. It's just part of the algorithm. So it really does look good right now, folks. So TPTW might get some more today. I get the feeling she won't. I think it's just going to level out, maybe dip a little bit more. I'm not really worried about that. What I'm concerned about is I N uh the other company. What was the dicker on that one? It was INOQ. That's the one I should be watching. That needs to be on the watch list. TPTW has already grabbed all the glory away from INOQ. I don't know what to say here, folks. As I said, misplaced value. Who should have got all the love for that? I know that TPTW is the parent. They're going to gain something on this deal. But it is INOQ, as I said before, that is the shell company that has no revenues that should be getting the most love. What do you think? You know, one of the most important things about trading is risk management. And the best way to manage your risk is to put your money into stocks that have value. Now, as a day trader, I know it's almost impossible because we're playing the momentum. We're not doing any DD. We're just playing whatever is running. But if you get stuck in a stock, if you get stuck holding a bag, you're going to be hoping that company has value, whether it be generating strong revenues, some innovative products, some great IP, or other companies just pouring love onto them. You're going to hope that company has value because that's going to determine how long you're holding that bag. So if you have a choice, folks, always look for companies that have value. It is the best way to manage your risk. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.